Melbourne have had little more than a training run. 66 to 16. Another turnover. It has been a pattern for the Tigers at this end of the field. Uh, yeah, obviously pretty disappointed. He's put a foot on the line in cleaning up the kick. Just got blown off the park to start with. Couldn't get the bounce of the ball and everything just went against us. The Tigers weren't ready and it's try number seven for Melbourne. It couldn't get any worse for the West Tigers. I didn't say anything at all. It's, it's up to us. There's a lot of underlying issues. We've dug this hole, we'll get ourselves out of it. They're men and... I know what we need to do. It's hard to remember seeing a game like it, 66 points to 16, that first half in particular for the Tigers under Michael Maguire. Uh, Insipid against uh, the Storm at Sunshine Coast Stadium. And obviously some big questions Gal have been asked since. Got any answers to those questions? No, no, I just don't know where the Tigers go. I mean, I look at that roster and I just... I can't see too many players wanting to go there because they don't have a big name or a big attraction in that roster at all. They've got James Tarmow, he's sort of at the back end of his career. I, like, I love Luke Garner, I think he's a great back rower. But I just don't see any one player there to attract another rep player or someone else. I just I don't see any attraction to go there. And they str- they're struggling to sign players. I just, I, I can't see, like, I, I, the Cowboys have a Tom Alolo or a Valentine Holmes or someone might have a, an Australian player in their side that can attract another player. I just, I don't see that at the Tigers. No one wants to go there, Gal. Well, there you go. With you know more than me. No one wants to go there. But I, just, I don't see a player or anything to attract them to go there. I just. But what's I, the first I thing you ask it. as a player if you're going to go to another club? What's the first thing you uh, ask? Probably the coach. Well, he's been there three years now, and I'm not saying he can't coach. But speaking to a lot of people, the players, the staff, it just seems like they're all uninspired at the moment. And I'm not saying that he's there's no other issues at the club. They're from. Top down, there are issues, and the roster's not good enough. But, but he's got the full support of the board, Michael. Oh, but it's been three years now, Brace, and but the rosters, you'd say on the surface, it's probably they got some good young signings in Dane Laurie and Stefano, but it seems like they're going backwards, are they not? I, I just, I, I, I still don't see their roster as a, a threatening roster at all. I really don't. As good as Dane Laurie can be at times, I, I don't think he's a, a player that's going to you know, break break the game open for you single handedly like we've seen other guys do. I just. I don't see their roster threatening at all. I just don't see it. Speaking of their roster, Gal, we speak so much about the play, maybe the players not wanting to go there. This has been spoken about a lot too. The players that have left the building as well. You can put together <laughs> wow. quite a team as well over the you know, recent years. And this does stretch. But you know, Well, that's, well that's, as I said, they're your ability to not only sign players, but keep players. That's, and that goes to show right there. They haven't got the ability to... Harry Grant's a, a tough one, but you have a look at the rest of that squad there. Not only can they not attract players, they're struggling to keep players. You know, you look at some guys there have been offered you know, astronomical money from other clubs, which you, can, you can't blame them for leaving. But as a whole, you know, how don't they keep half, the, half those players at least? Uh, I guess it, when you look at the Michael Maguire situation, we were watching with interest to see what he said at halftime uh, on Saturday night. He didn't, didn't say much. What would you be saying to a team in this situation at the moment? Well, I've never coached a team that was down 40 nil at half time. I've got to be honest, I wouldn't know what to say. Um, Look, we can, we can make light of it, but there is no more hostile place to be than out there in the middle of an NRL game when you are no chance, you have no direction and no belief. And that's where these young fellas, and you know, some of them aren't so young, but that's where this team found itself the other night. Totally isolated, totally out of their depth. The only voice they were hearing was the voice in their own head, and they weren't being very kind to, them, to themselves. And it just became one by traffic. It became farcical. There was, there was no element of team or spirit or collective effort from the Tigers at any time because they were totally outclassed. Now, this is not a condition exclusive to the Tigers, and we've just talked about the Broncos, but there are teams in this league at times, they're just openly admitting they cannot match it with the Panthers and the Melbourne Storms and the Rabbitohs and the, and the Parramatta's when they get it right. There is such a gulf between them. You know, Roosters have lost a lot of players and a lot of players injured. They could probably be in that ilk as well. But the rest of the competition, unless they're playing against each other, don't even feel competitive with the rest of them. Yep. You know, the Tigers will have their good afternoons when they're playing like for like around in the league somewhere. But the minute the thought that they've got to play against one of those sides, and that just became too hard for them the other night. And the gulf in our competition, exacerbated by the way we're playing and the rules that have been imposed and the other restrictions that we have, the ability to retain players, quality players, as we've seen that have left the club, comes down to the, 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 the recruitment modelling and the player, you know, the way we allow clubs to be poached. And yeah. it, it's, there's a whole raft of things that gets clubs in this position. But it's not nice. I keep going back to the fact we lost five head coaches last year. 
because they end up getting the blame for it. Michael Maguire, honestly, he's, he's, I can just see it in his face now. I can see it in Kevin Walder's face. Mm. There's a helplessness there. You know, they put on a brave face and try to act up for their players, but all he can do at the moment is pull them in tomorrow and start again, day by day, incremental improvement by incremental improvement, and keep trying to get them to pull together to put in some sort of performance. It's up to the club to develop what the West Tigers look like in five and ten years' time and, and their ability to recruit and their ability to be competitive and what sort of club do they want to be and what does it mean to play for the West Tigers? Because at the moment, I doubt there's anyone in that organisation can answer their questions. That's where it needs to be fixed. And it's a long-term fix. There's no magic wand. There's a long-term fix to it. They've all got to be involved in it. The league's got to demand it. It should be part of being in this competition that the NRL clubs look to invest in the future and that the NRL does it too. Michael, a quick one. Head office. Would there be concerns about these blowout scores? And we were had two 80-point games over the weekend. You had South doing a job on the... The gap between the best and the rest. Last year's grand finalists, you've got the Storm, the Eels, and then the Roosters just outside the four. There's a massive dearth between the two. Well, two there scores. is, and if they have concern, they're not expressing them. Well, there's ample opportunity to come out and say we have some concerns, but they're sticking by Michael Maguire at this point. But you, you can, as Gus said, you can see the signs there. That it's just not a happy place. I don't know about not being happy. It's They want to be happy. They want to be good. They just haven't got the artillery to do it. Simple as that. Mm. You know, they want to be happy. They're not fighting with each other. They're just in a situation that is very unenviable. And you feel sorry for them. It's untenable.